In 1981, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention published its first report describing a rare lung infection found in a group of previously healthy gay men in Los Angeles. Now, that infection would later be named HIV, the virus that causes AIDS. Now, more than 1.2 million people are living with HIV in America, men, women, gay and straight. Tomorrow is World AIDS Day, and today, AIDS experts in the Bay Area unveiling a new research center in San Francisco aimed at finding a cure. And today in the 4x4, we're taking four minutes to take a deeper look at that research and how close or far away we are. And we are joined now by Kevin Robert Frost, Chief Executive Officer for AMFAR, which is launching the new institute in San Francisco, set to open January 1st. Thanks for coming in. Uh, I guess my first question is, what will this institute uh, be able to do for researchers that really they're not able to do right now? Well, the most important aspect of it, I think, is that it has brought together all of the assets that are in the cure portfolio, if you will, in the San Francisco area. We have a collection of talent here, scientific talent, scientific minds, that simply is unrivaled. And in this competitive process, when we were looking for a place to house the Institute, San Francisco rose right to the top. The, the amount of talent, uh, the resources available, and the research that they were already doing, groundbreaking research, it was almost no question where the home for this institute would be. And when you say they were not connected or will be more connected, mm -hmm. give an example. What? Well, it, you can think of the different institutes. You have UC San Francisco, you have the Gladstone Institute, you have the Blood Systems Research Institute, you have UC Berkeley, you have pharmaceutical companies like Gilead, all of them have come together in a collaborative application to form this institute, to be part of this. Got it. And so they had great research going on in their institutes, but very often didn't know what the others were doing. Now they will. Got it. So we all know that it's critically important to find a cure. Where are we in that process? And what role do you think this institute will play in finally getting us to that end point? Well, this is the most exciting time I've ever mm. known in AIDS research because the enthusiasm and the momentum, the, the trajectory of the research now is at a place where we really believe that with this kind of investment mm -hmm. and with the right kinds of research we can not only have a cure for AIDS but we could have it in our lifetime oh. and my hope is that this Institute will build the scientific foundation that's actually going to get us there from 30 years ago uh, get doctors have made quite quite the strides in trying to find a cure what challenges right now I mean I, I read there's like four four top challenges which one would you say is the biggest challenge in trying to, to beat this virus? Well, we describe four scientific challenges, but I can really boil it down to a rather simple explanation. The HIV virus lives in what we call reservoirs in the human body. So even a person who's being effectively treated and may not have any sign of the virus in their blood still has virus hiding in their body, and we call those places reservoirs. Until we can get rid of those reservoirs, we can't cure people. And that's the goal. It all comes down to that simple question of reservoirs. Hmm. And aside from finding a cure, what else needs to be done to get more of a handle on the virus? Well, I think there's a, thing, a few things we could do to get a better handle on the mm -hmm. epidemic. And, and I should point out that the Bay Area has been leaders in this, too. Yeah. We need people to know their status. We need people to get tested. We need people to educate themselves, because education and knowledge are power in fighting the epidemic. And there are real tools that people can take to prevent themselves from becoming infected, but also to prevent the transmission of the virus. And those tools are available to people who are in care, have a doctor, and have the knowledge and know-how to use them. You talk about these reservoirs, not to go back just for a second, I'm kind of intrigued by them. So we can't find them in the body, we know where they are, we just can't get rid of them, can't kill it. Well, we certainly don't know where all of them are. Mm. Okay. That's a big part of the challenge. So anatomically, we know there are parts of the body that are conserved. For example, the brain. Does virus hide in the brain? It's very hard to know that in a living person. It's not as if you can just do a dissection and figure out if it's there or not. So we have enormous scientific challenges which have become technological challenges. And I think until we can overcome those, uh, we have work to do to cure people. Got it. All right. Thank you very much. Kevin Robert Frost, Chief Executive mm -hmm. Officer of AMFAR, congratulations and uh, look forward to January 1st and all the good work that will be done there. Thank you. All right. Appreciate Thank it. You.